Hello, my name is Scott Chacon. I'm the CEO of Git Butler. Today, I want to talk a little bit about our featured virtual branches. Now, this is very similar to what you might have used in Git with branching and merging, um, except the main difference is that you can be on multiple branches at the same time. And this actually unlocks a very different workflow that I think can help everybody be much more productive. So what I want to do is demo virtual branches. Um, and if you're interested in the alpha in helping us test this out and build this out, please let us know. You can join us on Discord um, or you can email us at hello at gitbutler.com. Now, um, what I want to do is just go through a little bit how virtual branches work, how, how Git Butler works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some features to this website here, and I'm going to go through what it's like to set up Git Butler, to commit into virtual branches, to push them to GitHub, to have them integrated, um, and just generally what the workflow is with this new tool. Um, so this is what Git Butler looks like right now. And basically what we want to do is we want to add a new project. Um, what you're going to do is you'll find it on, on your file system and you'll open it. Now, you, right now you have to have an actual Git project. So it has to be, you have to run Git init. Um, eventually we'll be able to do that or be able to clone something for you, but we assume you have something on disk right now. So, um, and it asks if you would like to, to connect to this to an existing site. So with Git Butler Cloud, we can synchronize all of your changes um, and all the file system changes that we see up to our cloud. You don't have to do that. I'm gonna do that um, for the purposes of this demonstration, but it's not, it's not necessary. You can keep everything completely local. Now, once that's done, you have to choose what's called a base branch. Now, this is normally a, a trunk, right? Sort of what production is, what production means for you. And GitHub does this too. If you're, if you're on GitHub, you have to choose sort of a default branch. Um, and that means, you know, when you open a, a pull request or something, that's the default that it will, it will try to have that pull request merge into. Um, we do the same thing except instead of having sort of a local master branch and you're pulling and you're creating local branches off of that, um, what we do is we say, tell us what your trunk is. And then everything that's different from that, we'll just assume it's a branch. It's a branch of some sort and we'll account for it that way. So usually that's gonna be something like origin main, origin master. So we're gonna choose origin main and we'll see that it imports all of these remote branches and, and other local branches so that you can turn them into virtual branches. Um, and if you're on a branch, it will also try to import, import that work too. Now, we can see that actually we don't have any current virtual branches. We didn't have any work on our, on our main branch uh, when we switched. Um, we do have one remote branch that it, it can see and it will fetch in the background every once in a while and look for remote branches so you can see kind of what your colleagues are, are working on or, or what's upstream. Right now we're up to date with origin main so um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go in and let's start, let's start working, right? We're not going to create a branch and start working on it. We're just going to start working. So we'll go in here and we'll say it's your code concierge instead of your code butler. Now, we can go to our website and we can see now it's changed to your code concierge instead of your code butler. Um, and we can go into to Git Butler and we can see it's already created a virtual branch automatically for us because it saw something different. It's but concierge instead of butler. And we can say, you know, this is copy change something. And we can commit that. And actually one of the nice things that we can also do is generate a commit message. This is gonna be a little bit overkill for this type of thing, but if you have lots of changes, it's actually relatively nice um, to have it go to our servers if you allow us to um, and send the diff up and say, okay, here's a, a, a commit message for you. So we can commit that with that commit message. Now, you can see that we have this change locally. Now, let's say that we uh, actually wanna make another change. So we go in here and we can see, okay, it added another change. It knows kind of, you know, here's the branch, here's another change, we can commit that as well. But let's say we don't wanna do that right now. Let's say, uh, instead what we do is we do something totally different. Let's say that we, we update our background color. So we can go here, we can see we've made this nice red background color. But what we can do is we can say, this is a separate thing, right? I'm, I'm still working on, maybe I picked up another ticket that had to do with the background change. And I kept working, but now these things are kind of combined into one branch. And normally you'd have to say, okay, I'm on a stash what I had and create a new branch and move that over. Um, with us, you don't have to do that. You can simply drag that hunk into another branch um, and say, these, this is my background change and, and commit the background change. We can also write a commit message. Now, again, there's a local commit that's made for that. Okay, so now we have our copy change in one branch. We have our background change in another branch. And let's say that we see some work from upstream. So 
let's say that somebody merged in upstream, one of your colleagues or something, um, and what Git Butler is going to do is it's going to check in the background every few minutes, or you can you can hit this button and make it sort of manually manually refresh. Um, but if you see something, there will be a little tag here, and it'll say there's some upstream work, right? And so somebody's put some upstream work in here. Um, and what's interesting about this is that let's you know go to our website uh, here. We have commits in two different branches, right? Um, and the change that I'm about to merge in is it adds a little link up here in, in, with blog and about us. Um, but actually, real quick, let's see what happens with our virtual branches. So one cool thing about our virtual branches is that we can apply them and unapply them whenever we want to. So if I, let's say, want to unapply my, my background change, I can just click this thing and it takes it out, right? Or if I want to, let's keep going down here, I want to unapply my copy change, I can apply it, I can unapply it, I can sort of add these in whatever order I want to, right? But let's keep them both applied, and now let's integrate upstream, right? So we have some upstream changes, we can click on this and look at this, right? Okay, it's reverting some jobs link thing, and I can merge that into my common base and merge upstream, and then what happens actually is that it rebases both of these branches on top of that. So now you can see there's this jobs link up here, um, but both of those things are there, and again, I can take them in and out, but the jobs link is there, right? So it's rebased both of these on top of origin main in this case. So that's pretty nice. Now, the other thing I can do is I can go ahead and push this, right? So if I, if I click push, what it's going to do is it's going to push up to GitHub. Now, if you don't have uh, an SSH key set up already, you can go to your, your uh, settings here, and you can go down and copy the SSH. We'll generate one for you. You can copy to the clipboard and click here and add that key to GitHub uh, if you'd like to, um, to make it easy. Now, we have these two branches. We've rebased them both on top of main. One of them has a, a branch that's open, and I can go in there and I can open a pull request based off of this. And the nice thing is you can see that it only has this change. It doesn't have the background change, right? If I push this one, the opposite is true. It will only have the background change. Um, it will not have uh, the copy change. So the other cool thing is that I can go in and I can keep working, right? So if I wanna keep iterating on this background, uh, this is going to be pretty. Let's see what we got here. That's a it's a nice color, I think. So if we want to iterate on this, it will put it into the virtual branch that is most associated with the change that you had. So this is the background change branch. So that's where it goes. Uh, and we can say this is a better color and commit that. And now we have some local changes here and some push changes, and we can see sort of what the difference is, right? And so let's go ahead and merge in this sort of origin copy change here. We'll, we'll create a pull request off of it. We'll open the pull request. We'll merge the pull request in. And we'll delete the branch. And then when we go back to Git Butler, um, it will check. It sees, hey, there's some upstream work. And it notices that the branch that you have there is already integrated, right? And so it can see it's actually not merged. You, you're still on the branch that you're on, but it sees in upstream, in origin main, this work is already integrated, right? And so when you go and you merge into common base, it simply notices that and it pulls that branch out. And for the branch that was pushed, now it doesn't rebase it because it sees, you know, that there's some work that's pushed and you probably don't want to force push to a pull request. Um, in the future, we'll be able to, to change this. You can uh, rebase the branch and, and create open a new pull request or something, but we don't want force pushes. So right now what we do instead is we merge that in. So now we just have this background change uh, in our site, but the concierge is there and the jobs is there. And when I take this out, all it does is change the background around. And now I can push this up. I can create a, a pull request based off of this as well. So. That's sort of an overview of virtual branches and, and how you can work on virtual branches. And again, I can go in, I can keep working, I can keep creating new pull requests, uh, new branches, merging them, pushing them, um, and then they get taken out. As soon as they're integrated upstream, I can just kind of leave them there as long as I want to. And then as soon as they're integrated, it'll tell me, hey, this is integrated. And as soon as I merge uh, or, or integrate sort of upstream, up the, the, whatever the trunk is, whatever production is, and it sees, okay, that's done now and it just automatically removes that branch for me. And so what it ends up doing is making it so that you don't have to create branches a lot, right? You're just sort of moving work into branches, creating them on the fly as you need them, rather than before the fact. 
um, and you're not deleting branches, it's noticing that you don't need them anymore and it's taking them out based on when it sees the work upstream. Um, so it really simplifies a lot of what you're doing. It's rebasing for you automatically, it's merging for you automatically, and it's testing, can I do this or not? Next to each branch, it'll tell you, you can merge this, you can't merge this. So that's virtual branches in a nutshell. I hope that you're interested in joining our alpha. Um, please, again, go to our website, go to our Discord, ask us to, to come in. We would love your help. Um, I think this is a completely different way of working. We've been using it for about a month internally, uh, and I haven't gone back to the command line since. So thank you very much. This has been Scott from Git Butler, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.